takes the snap, sets up, sets up, throws one over the net, intercepted! Marlon Jackson! Marlon's got it! We're going to the Super Bowl! We're going to the Super Bowl! I know you're going to dig this. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. I'm about to go down! You're listening to the For the Culture Podcast, hosted by Luke Diamond, Jason Spears, and Bobby Jefferson. With the 144th pick in the 2017 draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Grover Stewart, a 6'5", 340-pound defensive tackle slash nose tackle out of Albany State as Chris Ballard continues to add depth, size, and competition up front to a front seven that ranked 32nd in the National Football League in 2016. This is really a 2018 and beyond guy for Chris Ballard and the Colts. He fills a need. He is something that we did not have. He's a he's a prototypical nose tackle. Once you get him coached up and he can learn how to use his hands and use his leverage. And one thing that he has that a lot of guys his size do not have is he can actually give you something on third down. He can be a sub-package guy. He's a guy where because his feet are so quick and they'll get quicker and they'll get better once he gets acclimated to the NFL game, he is one where he can give you a little wiggle and he can give you some pass rush to kind of push the pocket up the middle. So this is something with him and Hankins going forward 2018 and beyond. You know, he's going to get good coaching. He's going to see some good competition. Hankins will be there to kind of get him up to speed and kind of show him the NFL game. And I like the pick. You know, like I said, the size matches the need, which matches what Ballot wants to do on the D-line as far as getting bigger, stronger, faster, and really creating some competition. This will be very interesting to see how David Perry, and I know he's not on our good side. He's not a guy that we really favor as a football player for the Colts, but this will be a guy that now is really put on notice because they brought in not one, not two, but three guys that essentially play his position and quite honestly, probably plays his position better than, than he, um, you know, the jury's still out on Grover, but I think with time and, you know, the right pieces around and the right opportunity to give him as far as putting him in certain situations, I think all three of those guys will outlast, outshine, outplay, and probably be on the roster before David Perry. But I love the pick. And I think it's, like I said, it's a 2018 and beyond pick. And I think this is something in three or four years, I think we're going to have a conversation of, okay, here's a guy hitting free agency and he's going to be commanding big money. He's got that type of feet. He has the potential to be that type of player. With the 158th pick in the 2017 draft, the Indianapolis Colts select cornerback Nate Hairstein out of Temple. And listen to this, Bobby. Chris Ballard, in his first seven picks, took two cornerbacks. Ryan Gritchen, in 38 picks over five years, only took one cornerback. And there's a reason why we need cornerbacks <laughs> uh, because of that glaring statistic. Look, this is a guy where did we need corners? Absolutely. Did we need good quality corners and depth at that position? Yes, we did. We need to get younger as well, and we also need to see some competition in those spots and really try to take that next step in the cornerback spot. Look, this scheme and the way this defense is played being a 3-4, if you've got some corners that can actually play and be physical, get their hands on guys and get their hands on footballs, uh, you're, you're gotta, you've got a pretty good defense brewing. So, you know, Harrison, he's a, he's a tough kid. You know, every time you hear guys from the East Coast or guys from Temple, you know, he's, he's a Temple kid. He's a, he's a Philly kid. He just plays football, man. He's a converted wide receiver. So he's pretty quick. He's got some agility. He's got some great hands. And what translated from his receiver skills to his DB skills was the fact that he was able to track the ball and have really good ball skills. He's not the fastest. I think he was a 4-5 or five guy. Uh, but he's a guy that right now you can see him competing in the slot, uh, getting some reps in the slot. But he is going to be a core special teams guy for you right now. He loves to tackle, loves contact. He's physical. And he's not going to be a guy that's going to shy away from running downfield on kickoff, kickoff return, punt, punt return, or whatever, and really laying some wood on some guys. So he's a guy, is he going to start this year? Probably not. Is he going to see action? Absolutely. Reason being is because it's wide open back there. With Wilson on one side, Vontae on the other, and figuring out who's going to 
you know, compete for that, that nickel corner, you know, with, with Melvin um, and now Harrison and some of the other guys that they're bringing in, some of the undrafted guys that we'll probably talk about later on. But it just creates a lot of competition. And he's in a good spot. He can learn. And like I said, when he actually gets an opportunity to play, you know, watch out for this kid because he likes to play hard. He likes to play fast and physical. And, again, he feels another need. You know, one corner in five years, that's unheard of. So Ballard knew his work was cut out for him. Uh, and he went and, you know, did what he needed to do as far as trying to solidify. I, I use the word try because all these guys right now are on paper and they haven't done anything yet. But try to solidify that, that secondary with some youth and some depth and some quality guys that can really, you know, blossom here at that position. So I like that pick. And, again, all these picks, you know, with Stewart, Harrison, and Walker, all these guys are 2018 and beyond. Maybe not Walker. We'll talk about him in a second. But the first two guys are definitely, let's see what they can do this year. And 2018 is when they really need to hit the ground running because the way we structure a lot of those free agent guys that we sign, you know, they're one to three year deals. So it's pretty much, hey, let's see what you got because we're bringing in depth and we're bringing in youth and we're, we're going to blend that with what we have right now. So, you know, I like Harrison. Um, I, like, I like his upside. Um, and I like what he can do, you know, in the future. But starting him out right now in the nickel, um, right there in that slot, will be uh, that slot corner is going to be a good spot for him. And when you look at the three DBs that Ballard drafted, all of them share one quality, and that is that ball hawking, ball skills ability. You look at Hooker, you look at Wilson, and you look at Nate. All three guys have hands. They have the ability to make plays on the ball. When you look at the Colts secondary, you know, you can nitpick a thousand things that was wrong with it but they did not create turnovers at all in 2016. And now we just added three guys in the first seven picks of the draft that all have the ability to create turnovers and get the ball in 12's hands. Yeah, and one thing that really stood out with the Colts and watching the Colts for years and you watch other games and other teams because you're a fan of football, the one thing that other teams did well that the Colts never did well was you never saw their corners be opportunistic and jump routes. The only corner I could think of that would actually jump around and make it seem kind of effortless was Darius Butler. Now, we didn't see that a lot last year because of the injuries, but even with the Denver game, you still kind of saw the potential for him to do it until he blew out his hammy, you know, two yards after catching the ball. But you've seen some games a few years back against Jacksonville. That one rings out because it was a Thursday night game. But he was the only corner, and I'm putting Vontae in this as well, that really just jumped routes. A lot of Vontae's routes was I went up and bat- I mean interceptions. He went up and battled for the ball. But as far as seeing those safeties jump routes and seeing those corners kind of jump routes and get those picks and those pick sixes that we see everywhere else sometimes on Sunday, the Colts have not had in a long time. And I think bringing in these young guys who are very instinctive and very aggressive. I mean, this, let's just be honest, a lot of them are kind of edgy. They're, they're cocky, and you need that kind of confidence and that kind of swagger when you're back there on that island. And I think that's something where once they continue to develop and blossom, we'll start seeing more routes getting jumped for the home team. And like you said, getting that ball back to 12, because an extra possession here, possession there, could mean a difference between 8-8 eight and eight and you know 11-5 and five, or you know 9-7 and seven and 12-4. and four. So getting that ball back to 12 and that offense and letting them operate is priority one, two, and three at this point. Yeah, I had this stat when we were doing, I believe, either the Hooker or Wilson video, and it was something like the Colts' defense had eight interceptions, I want to say, last year. Seven of them came from the secondary. Two of them were Mike Adams, who's gone. So out of returning D-backs, we have five interceptions from 2016 returning in 2017, which is just so incredibly pathetic. So pathetic. And last but not least, in the fifth round of the 2017 draft, 161st overall, the Indianapolis Colts select Anthony Walker Jr., an inside linebacker out of Northwestern. When you look at the Colts' picks this year, all eight picks coming in the first five rounds, all eight picks coming in the first 161 picks of the 2017 draft, nothing in the sixth. Nothing in the seventh, couple trades. You had the Dwayne Allen trade, a couple different things, moving us around, keeping us up towards the top of this draft collectively throughout the draft, picks one through eight. Now, this was the Colts' last pick, but it was not a seventh-round pick. This is a fifth-round linebacker that we're talking about. And the inside linebacker depth in this draft was solid. And because it was so solid, it pushed really good guys into the fifth round. 
and Anthony Walker, to me, is a really good linebacker. Listen, this guy is the combination of intelligence, football smarts, football speed. He's very smart. You know, he went to Northwestern. He played in a great defense um, there. He was a signal caller there. He was a captain there. And one thing that I love about him is he is very intelligent. He's football savvy. He understands how to call a defense. Listen, I was reading some things uh, from the rookie minicamp, and the coaches praised him for how well he, one, took grasp of the huddle, two, was able to communicate the defense through the headset to the entire defense. And all these guys are rookies out there trying to learn. But he, he had one thing that the Colts need and they need going forward, and he showed leadership qualities from day one. That by itself puts him in competition and really makes it a great battle with him, Bostic, Spence, Morrison, and Edwin Jackson. This guy could possibly be a starter. We could see a rookie starting an inside linebacker week one. He's nice size. He's 6'1", almost 6'2". You know, he's almost 240 pounds, 4'6 guy. So one thing that the Colts struggled with mightily the last two years were combo routes with inside linebackers getting matched up on tight ends or backs or whatever. They just flat out couldn't cover anybody. They were slow, and teams knew if we could get matchups one-on-one with inside linebackers against the Colts, we're going to win. This guy gives you the opportunity for him to stay on the field for three downs. It's what Jarrell Freeman was for us, but he's been gone. And we never got that, you know, with anybody else that we had. And, you know, no knock to Morrison, no no knock to Edwin Jackson. They were young. They were inexperienced. Morrison sometimes looked completely lost in space, had no idea where he was going. But I think Walker has the intangibles as far as football IQ and football intelligence to really put himself in a position to be a hard person not to sell, to put on the field and or start week one. I could go on and on about this guy as far as tackling this, that, and the other, but the one thing that I like about him is the fact that he is smart and he will he will lead and he will put players in the right position from day one because he has that much intelligence and he can grasp the playbook that quickly. So because he can do that, the one thing we need on defense going forward is we need to improve our football IQ. You looked at the Colts' defense last year, and, yeah, we were a half a step slow on certain things, and we were out of position. And a lot of that had to do with football IQ. That is your linebackers communicating to everyone where they need to be. And, you know, you can blame Monikino for whatever, but at the end of the day, football players have to make football plays. And this guy's a football player. I think he can make football plays. Throw in Sean Spence and Bostic. I think that right there, I think those three will be your triangle as far as the three guys in heavy rotation. And I think you'll see Edwin Jackson and Morrison kind of resort back to special teams if they even make the team. Because, like I said, there's some undrafted guys and some guys that Ballard still wants to bring in that could push those guys either off the roster or further down the depth chart. So love the pick with Walker, and I think it's going to be tremendous for the Colts. <laughs> 